Good evening and welcome to the Livonia Public Schools regular board meeting of October 21st, 2024. Mrs. Acosta, would you take the roll, please? Gladly. Mrs. Bonifield? Here. Mrs. Burton? Here. Mrs. Frank? Here. Mrs. Jarvis is absent. Mr. Johnson? Here. Mrs. Acosta is here. President Bradford? Here. We have a quorum. And this evening, I'm excited to uh, have our Hayes Elementary Green Ribbon students. They're going to lead us in our pledge. So if you guys want to come forward. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. What a wonderful job. We're off to such a great start with that. All right, so we're going to move on uh, to item three, communications, and this evening uh, we have a point of pride, and again, we have the Hayes Elementary Green Ribbon Recognition, and we have several students and their families here this evening, so we welcome you all. We're glad you're here, and um, we are going to hear from Mrs. Jenkins. Good evening, President Bradford, Good members evening. of the board, Superintendent Oquist. Uh, tonight, I am so excited to bring to you a very special point of pride for our district. As you listen to the details about Hayes Elementary School being recognized by the U.S. Department of Education as a green ribbon school, keep in mind all that went into this special designation. It's a perfect example of how our schools, our community, and our amazing staff and students came together for a cause and made a difference on so many levels. You'll hear tonight from Hayes Elementary art teacher, Christine Lakatos, who has been the driving force behind the environmental efforts in education at Hayes over the past several years. You'll also hear how the community supported bond issues uh, that were approved in, um, tw twice in recent years have played <clears throat> a key role in furthering these environmental efforts and how the students are learning new green ways of thinking and doing. You'll also hear from Hayes students who are passionate about these efforts and how they are making a difference not only at Hayes, but in the world. Without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce Christine Lakatos and our friends from Hayes Elementary. Well, thank you for inviting us. We're excited to be here. I have brought with me tonight uh, my green ambassadors from Hayes. Love it. Um, we have been a uh, Mich designated Michigan Green School since 2016, but we wanted to kind of step it up to the next level. And in order to receive the U.S. Department of Education Green Ribbon School Award, a school must meet the three pillars and there is a slide that goes with that that shows those pillars, there they are. And you have to be nominated by an education consultant in Lansing. And I noticed that Michigan had not been nominated in six years, so I did you know, a little research and reached out to the education department and we were able to secure the nomination. Um, we then began the lengthy application process with, um, by our staff and parent-led a green team and while Hayes has implemented many environmental initiatives on its own it was the LPS bond funded improvements such as the upgrades to lighting roofing transportation HVAC and water quality that played a key role in earning this award these efforts contributed to meeting our first pillar which is in reducing environmental impacts and costs the second pillar health and wellness was achieved through initiatives such as Hayes Outdoor Walking and Running Path, um, the addition of our outdoor classroom, and a native plant garden, which will be installed in the spring of 2025, thanks to funding through the LPS Education Foundation. 
Um, the district's enhanced student support services, which integrate social emo emotional learning, or SEL, demonstrate the district's uh, commitment to mental health, and these services align our curriculum with the district's community with character traits, reinforcing the importance of emotional well-being for students. For pillar number three, effective environmental and sustainability education, this was achieved through the district's introduction of Project Lead the Way and enrichment classes. For art enrichment, our former principal, Larry Grizak, proposed that we should use this time, or I should use this time for green team enrichment. So I blend artistic expression with environmental themes, encouraging creativity while instilling an appreciation for the planet. Our green team contributes positively to the local environment by part partnering with the neighborhood native plant garden at Corrado Park, the, the bird, butterfly, and bee garden, where we've created signs to identify plants and the, the pollinators that they attract. We have donated a bench made from recycled bottle caps, uh, participated in a monarch release, and we even have a time capsule buried under the sign. Um, I was very fortunate to travel to Washington, D.C. this summer um, in July um, to accept the award on behalf of Hayes, and I'm grateful for the travel support uh, from Livonia Public Schools. Um, the Department of Education organized several activities through the week, um, which I was able to enjoy with my family, including a memorable tour of the White House, and that is my grandson, well, it was up there in the slide. <laughs> Um, at the award ceremony, they had speakers, breakout sessions, and I had the opportunity to connect with um, representatives from other school districts. And to my surprise, most attendees were administrators, finance directors, and even superintendents rather than teachers. Uh, many of these districts also have dedicated sustainability departments, which I found to be a tremendous idea. <laughs> Um, the event also included a beautiful reception at the National Press Building where I had the chance to meet with some lo local politicians. So my friends that I brought with me tonight, um, Tim, Lizzie, Izzy, and Matthew, and Riley are going to be telling you about some new initiatives that we added this year. So first up is recycling, Riley and Izzy. Can we have their slide? Um, oh, thank you. You got it. Here, here let's slide it. Yeah. Okay. Our game team is on a mission to help the earth. With our new recycling station, we're turning paper, plastic, metal, cardboard, even old markers into something new. Every time we stop, every time we recycle, we stop trash from piling up and help protect the earth. Our next slide is um, about our waste audit that we conducted. Um, our green team got our hands dirty with the waste audit after lunch, and what we found was surprising. We sorted through all the trash and discovered that the thing we throw away the most is unopened food, food that wasn't even touched. One garbage bag we weighed had 14 pounds of un un uneaten food inside. That's like throwing away a whole pile of lunches. We learned that we can do better by sharing or saving food instead of tossing it. Okay, that's the slide from the waste audit. And they were not afraid to get their hands dirty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next is our um, share cart. Lizzie. To cut down on food waste, we started a new share cart. It's run by students, and here's how it works. If you have non-perishable food at lunch that you don't want, you can put it on the cart. Other students can grab it if they're still hungry, or teachers can use it for healthy snacks in class. It's a simple way to make sure good food doesn't go to waste. Let's keep our earth happy. All right, and our final slide is Matthew and Waste Free Wednesdays. Welcome to Waste Free Wednesdays. Every time you bring a lunch or a snack in reusable containers, you'll get a raffle ticket. These tickets give you a chance to win some really cool prizes. Not only are you helping the
planet by reducing waste, but you also get to be a winner. <laughs> and that concludes our presentation. Wow, awesome job, guys. Way to go with these Huskies. Um, I'd like to conclude by presenting, um, well, first acknowledging th and thanking Mrs. Christine Broom for attending. She's the principal of Hayes Elementary. Yay, thanks for being here. And then we have this uh, special certificate of recognition. Um, it reads Livonia Public Schools Certificate of Recognition, Hayes Elementary School for being named a National Green Ribbon School by the U.S. Department of Education for Environmental Stewardship and Effective sustainab Sustainability Education, uh, dated October 21st, 2024, and signed by Superintendent Andrea Oquist. Yeah, so you. this is for you to keep at your school. Yeah, thank you. Thank Are, you so much for being here, everyone. Yep. Um, are there any comments or questions uh, from the, any board members? Mrs. Burton. Uh, yes. I am thrilled that you guys are able to be here with us tonight. It's so exciting to have our students present information to us. And one of my favorite things that I heard was the way that you guys are figuring out how to how to slow down food waste and your sharing cart. That is a fabulous idea. I absolutely love it. And I won't, uh, I'll stop there because I'm sure others want to chime in with their comments too. Thanks so much for being with us tonight, guys. Anybody else? Mrs. Frank. Congratulations. We're so excited for the work that you're doing. And I think it's great that you as students are taking leadership of it and really helping out to, um, to, to help your school to be a green school. And thank you to Ms. Takedos for all your leadership. We're grateful for you. Aww. Aww. Mrs. Oakwood. Yes. Well, what a joy it is to have you here today. I told them this is going to be our favorite meeting because right yes. in the front row are just such uh, joyful and happy students who have done such a great job as green ambassadors at Hayes. And we think your teacher is pretty awesome as well. Yes. Um, she is really committed to this effort. And there have been so many unique and special activities that you have helped coordinate along with the students over several years. Um, this is certainly not new, but if I'm correct, one of only two from Michigan, mm -hmm. correct? And how many across, and very few across the country? Um, yeah. yeah, of tens of thousands of schools yeah. across the country. So two in Michigan, and uh, many, many efforts had to go into earning this kind of recognition. Um, so it, one, it is just the absolute right thing to do. Um, it's wonderful for our planet, and it teaches our students such important habits. And I, I love Waste Free Wednesday oh, because yes. it really makes you think twice about what you carry your food in, right? Mm -hmm. What you carry your drink in. And I know when I go to schools now, I see so many more water bottles rather than the plastic bottles and people reusing those. So just those, each of those little ways um, that you can encourage your classmates and your families and our staff to do that. And just think about how that can ripple across a district as large as ours. So you are such great role models for mm -hmm. um, really, really good, healthy choices um, that are not only going to help now, but help in the future. So I'm so proud. I used to be, they, we weren't the Huskies, but when I was your age, I went to Hayes Elementary too. Aww. And I did. And I love seeing my friends from Hayes. So it's wonderful to know that tr the tradition of just really special things continue to go on there. And Mrs. Broom, thank you for joining us as well. You, I'm sure you are so proud um, of our Huskies who are here tonight with us. So Mrs. Lakatos, congratulations. Keep these wonderful efforts going. I know we have something special happening in the spring. Is that correct? Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, oh, come to the mic. There we go. Um, we're having an Earth Day celebration. Um, I believe that is September 22nd. Do you have the calendar? <laughs> um, we are also um, or April or uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, April. Like, uh, yeah, in the spring. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? Sorry. September. September. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I didn't have that written down. <laughs> That's all right. 
Um, we're having an Earth Day celebration and um, a flag raising ceremony because last year we also earned a green flag um, award. And so we we're just gonna kind of put that one on hold for now. And so um, we'd like to invite all of you to come to that. There'll be um, some special activities and um, the art show, which is a uh, recycling theme, we're calling it the art show, A-R-R-R-T. <laughs> awesome. So there'll be a lot of good things for you to see. And, and um, I'm hoping that uh, Ms. Uh, Superintendent Oakless could help us with the ceremony that yes. day. And I can't wait, I have it on my right. calendar. Very exciting, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Did you want to ask something? Yes. yes. Come on up. My birthday's on Earth Day. Your birthday's oh. on Earth Day? That's like a double so celebration. Second. This is going to be so much fun. <laughs> oh my goodness, you have to remind me if I don't remember that, okay? <laughs> Could you guys stick around? We just have yep. one more quick item, and then I think Mrs. Bradford, or oh, a couple. Are we, are we going to, do you want to uh, break right now, and or do you, would you like to do the district update? Whatever you would prefer. Yeah, let's do the update, and then we're going to break, and then we'll be able to congratulate you. Can all, you stick all. around for a few more minutes? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, okay. that'd be great. And parents, thank you so much for bringing them tonight. That's yes, exciting. We're so happy to have you. And I really think you ought to take this on the road. Every school should be <laughs> saving their, uh, uh, doing their share cart. I'm like, I love that idea. So I'm so proud of all of you and, and everybody that's involved in the, in the green school. So congratulations. Okay, if you want to have a quick seat, Mrs. Oquist is going to go ahead. We're going with 3B, the district update from our superintendent. So you're on, Mrs. Oquist. Thanks Oquist. so much, President Bradford. We've got some great things happening across the district, so we'll share it on the screen. As you know, we always start with some highlights of learning and growing. So here we have some awesome things happening at Cooper Upper Elementary. Um, music class, you know, we're doing things a little bit differently, and one of the neat things is, is our students get to explore many different instruments and so they are studying violins right now um, also in the center you see them doing some important math practice and of course some book fair fun a lot of our elementary schools and our media specialists held book fairs during parent teacher conferences um, these past couple of weeks and here we have some of our students from the career center um, one of the neat things that um, are is always embedded in their learning is that hands-on experience and so um, we had some students from our criminal justice class doing virtual reality simulators, um, and as well as our advanced sports medicine. Um, and they are, in, in the sports medicine class and all of the medicine classes, they do quite a bit of hands-on practice. Um, because as you know, they are able to be certificated at the end of their program and ready to um, go into the workforce. So here they are practicing the use of splints. And we have Mrs. Mitchell's uh, kindergarten students who um, are just amazing working together. They find great places to collaborate all around the classroom um, and doing some wonderful work there. It's amazing how much has transitioned just in eight weeks in kindergarten. And uh, the eSports clubs are becoming more and more popular. So here you see the eSports club at Frost Middle School. Um, they're using a, a really neat space that is uh, inside their newly renovated media center. Um, and so, uh, as you know, we are also building a special eSports space in the Churchill uh, Media Center next summer. So definitely a growing interest. Here we have our Johnson Upper Elementary um, kiddos and um, they, they are running, I believe Mr. Traub said, 12 to 14 SOAR clubs. Um, and so students are um, having an amazing time with their um, staff members who are supporting these clubs um, and it's part of their PBIS reward program. And so whether it's a puzzle club or a knitting club or a Harry Potter club, there are a ton of different clubs um, at Johnson Upper Elementary and the students are able to attend them and make some choices during their SOAR time. So awesome job to um, our staff for putting that on for our kids. In here we have Mrs. Trombley's class at Churchill High School. Um, they were um, working on creating the uh, architectural details of the pyramids. Um, and so the, as they were studying ancient Egypt, they were able to create them, label them, um, and uh, pretty engaged in what they were doing. So always some neat activities happening there. As you know, it's been homecoming time. Last month we celebrated 
and shared some um, highlights from Stevenson Homecoming. So this month we are celebrating from um, Churchill and Franklin. Um, so we had the Chargers here. Um, they had the band, the court, um, tons of great festivities. The band just uh, knocked your socks off and um, always amazing and uh, a great game as well. And here we have Franklin Homecoming. We have some scenes from the assembly. Um, so whether, whether it's uh, some different contests between the grade levels um, or um, students doing POM or guy girl POM, um, always tons of fun um, on those Friday afternoon assemblies that take place before the game in the evening and then the dance on Saturday. So a huge amount of work from our student activities directors and all of our students who are involved in um, Congress or Senate, um, just a huge part of planning all of those activities um, and uh, always culminates with a ton of fun at the end of the week. And if you have not seen the new mascot at Johnson, this is Jerry the Jayhawk. How cool is he? Um, so they unveiled their new mascot last week. Um, he came out during the school's color run and you see him there on the left with Mr. Traub. I'm not gonna tell you who might be underneath that Jerry the Jayhawk costume. Um, but he has already made a great splash. It really is a very cool mascot costume. And there, we had a unified sports day a few... Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Does he ever get caught in that? Like, <laughs> that he does. So, yes. And uh, all of our... Uh, we at, at each of our high schools, there's a mascot with a costume, and it gets a little, a little uh, sweaty underneath there. Yeah, great question. Yes. I don't know. I think generally the people that are chosen to do that are usually pretty energetic people. So I think they enjoy it. I think they enjoy it. But I have been at games when they've needed to take a little break. Yes. Um, so we had Unified Sports Field Day, which was awesome. Franklin was the host. Um, we had students from Grant, from Randolph, from Churchill, from Franklin. Um, it was amazing. Uh, they had bocce set up. They had um, the track set up and football and lots of different, they, we, they had um, our students from each of our center programs and their peers um, through peer connections there and lots of our teachers and coaches. Um, it was not only a beautiful day, but it was a ton of fun as well. You see a few more here practicing their, um, the different sports and one of the neat things was when the students came um, over, they, were, they came on the bus, which is always a great time when, when uh, when they head over to Franklin and then just coming out onto the field if you haven't been there, if our students hadn't been there before and just to go out onto the Franklin field and um, participate in all these activities, it was a really special, special day. And lots of color runs going on. So as you know, it's a, a pretty popular way to fundraise at our school. So lots of um, them happening across, but we see some pictures here from Cleveland Elementary and Buchanan. Um, and definitely the eye covering is a good idea. If you've never been through a color run before the powder gets uh, shared, having something uh, over the eyes is helpful. And Nishi Iro recently held their um, Onjikai event, which is a huge sports day. It's a tradition in Japan and it is really an all day event from three legged races to tug of wars to lots of different events each Grade level wore it, their, their color t-shirt that they wear and over a hundred parent volunteers were there to um, cheer on our students and to help the day go by. Um, just a wonderful event and uh, as always, Niji Iro shows up big for all of these special traditions. I don't know if you, how many of you remember the, the um, Spartan outside of Stevenson and the letters. So when, when the old auditorium came down, so did the letters and so did the Spartan. Um, and I know when, um, when I attended Stevenson, I, I remember the Spartan and some uh, unauthorized movement of the Spartan. I'd like to be clear I was not involved in that um, at that time, but I do remember that. Well, since that time, <laughs> um, those letters have been restored by Mr. Bryden, our industrial arts teacher at Stevenson, um, and some alumni from the class of 2024 who took time over the summer to restore the letters and they are now displayed on the opposite side of that wall um, in the hallway, in the front hallway at Stevenson. So it's a beautiful restoration and a great way to capture 
um, something that is probably pretty familiar to Stevenson alum, but um, has, has not been seen in quite some time. Um, so it's wonderful work that was done to take that original lettering and now bring it um, inside the school. Oh, yes. You know, that's a, that's a great question. Franklin was built first. Oh, okay. Yes. Yep, Franklin was built first, and the designs are super similar. Great question. Yes. Did the roofing come down from uh, when the, like, the barn end and the gutters came down? No, the, ro the roofing stayed, but all of the inside got taken apart. It got gutted. We renovated the school, and so that's now a new collaboration room, and the, a new auditorium was built just like at Franklin. Oh. Yeah, it's really beautiful. This is, I've never had so much audience like this. <laughs> it's usually pretty quiet during my presentations, and I'm loving that there are people paying attention and interested. They're this big. is great. Yeah. No, no, no. You know, normally my mom watches from home, and she's interested, but about yeah. other than that, that's about it. So this is very fun. Um, My mom and, and, yeah, and Mrs. Yeah. Burton's mom, too. Um, so we have fall sports in full swing. If, uh, we love our Emerson Eagles, and um, the mascot was out also. P probably pretty warm as well, right? Just like yeah. the Jayhawk. Um, so Eddie the Eagle made an appearance to support the volleyball team who had an awesome season. They were 8-2. and two. So congratulations to our Eagles. And you see here, yes, yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And uh, we have our Holmes volleyball team here who also had some great success this fall. And you'll see here our cross country team. We had um, recently had a city meet and um, boy, that is, that is definitely a tough sport, um, but our students have had a great season at both the um, middle school and the high school. The Stevenson's volleyball um, was, were the city champs and they are also KLAA East Division champs, so congratulations to the team. And we have our Frost, uh, Franklin Cross Country team. They are city champs and also KLAA East Division champs. So they earned that and um, have some amazing runners on that team as well. Again, ton of dedication. Those, those runners start in the summertime um, and go all the way through the fall and you have got to have definitely some, some grit and some resilience. It's the Kensington Lake Activity Association. That is the sports conference that we belong to. And congratulations to Stevenson Girls Swim and Dive. They were named city champs and recently um, wrapped up their season. And you see here at um, Churchill, um, Churchill ha held an amazing unified sports afternoon. So they had soccer going on, guy girl cheer, Tom, and I believe, I thought they had one other event there as well, um, but a, a co combined event um, at Churchill and they had a beautiful afternoon for it. And here you see our Franklin swimmers enjoying the new pool. Um, we've had upgrades to the scoreboard, it's amazing, um, and to the starting blocks. I know it's hard to see, but they're all brand new starting blocks and tile um, and paint and um, the uh, Franklin Patriot, uh, branding all around, so you've seen, certainly the board has seen some pictures, mm -hmm. um, but here they were hosting Churchill and um, they are definitely enjoying that new area. And here we have some of our um, students in the all conference for cross country that recently took place. And just a few more kudos as we wrap up. Um, we had, yes, we had our Livonia United Girls Hockey Team um, participate in the Kids Against Hunger meal packing event. Mrs. Bonifield, how many meals were packed? We actually wound up uh, packaging 51,000 meals. Amazing, oh. amazing. Absolutely. So a huge kudos to um, Livonia United Girls Hockey Team for being there and to all of the volunteers. There were dozens of volunteers. 150 volunteers there. Amazing. Wow. Packing 51,000 meals. So congratulations, ladies, and thank you for giving back to your community.
And, and how cool is this? Um, we had one of our um, Cleveland Elementary kiddos who was picked up from school and got to have lunch with Livonia Fire and Rescue. It was part of um, the Color Run fundraising, um, and she had a really cool experience. Had a chance to have lunch and go in the fire truck, and what a, what a neat opportunity. So thanks to the Livonia Fire Department for helping to coordinate that. And you'll see here a familiar face from Stevenson, Mr. Barker, AP US history teacher. Um, he was recently honored as a best in class teacher. Um, and he is um, here with uh, Drew Miller, um, a, Detroit, a former Detroit Red Wing. Um, he received a gift bag, a glass award, and a $500 Meyer gift card. And he also got to attend the game. So um, pretty exciting and congratulations to an amazing teacher. Lots of um, help going out to hurricane victims, and I love when our students jump in, and no surprise that the Emerson National Junior Honor Society and the Congress um, returned almost 3,500 bottles and cans. Um, it took over five hours in support for um, victims of Hurricane Milton and Hurricane Helene, um, and so they were able to raise over $345 to send to the American Red Cross. So thank you, Eagles. Great, great job. And you know our Kappa has um, some amazingly talented students. So our cre creative and performing arts class at Stevenson. Seven of our students have been chosen for the Michigan School Vocal Music Association the music, Musical Theater Intensive. Um, that is very, very difficult um, to earn a spot. And um, we want to give special congratulations to Moses Williams for being in the top eight finalists in the state. So congratulations to um, all seven of our students and a special congratulations to Moses. And this, but you're going to see a couple of our bands here recognized. Um, the MSBOA Festival was held recently at John Glenn. Um, and our Stevenson Marching Band earned a superior rating. They received straight ones and all A's for their performance. Outstanding work. And next you'll see our Churchill Marching Band and our drum major there earned a Division I Superior Rating um, at the MSBOA Marching Band Festival. Um, and also received a rating of A in three categories of music, marching, and general effect. So a ton of work. Another group who starts early in the summer and goes all through the summer and through the fall and at special events throughout the year. Um, they also helped us greet our staff back on the first day of school. So they just, um, they really, really lift the spirits of everyone around them. And it is no easy task to do the work that they do and to earn these kind of ratings. Mark your calendars for, um, we have portraits for the season, the um, ever popular portraits on the porch, um, which is uh, a fundraiser for the LPS Education Foundation, is getting a little bit of a new look. If you are familiar with the historic Wilson Barn near uh, Emerson Elementary, Emerson, I'm sorry, Emerson Middle School, on November 16th, um, there will be portraits for the season and the good news for the photographers and the families, it will be indoors. Mm -hmm. It will be decorated and ready to go. So thank you to um, Emily and to Mrs. O'Brien and to Mrs. Jenkins who are our volunteer photographers and give up hours and hours of their time to shoot the photos of families and also to edit them. And we have a few plays coming up, so I'll run through these quickly. Um, Kappa is doing the 28th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee um, coming up in two weekends in November. You can get admission to all of these online and there are always QR codes. And we'll move on to the Franklin Players um, are presenting Puffs. It's a Harry Potter parody, um, November 8th, 9th, and 10th. And Stevenson is doing Little Shop of Horrors, um, December 6th through the 8th. So all of these are available on our website as well as the school website. You can go right on with your QR code and pick up tickets. So thank you so much, President Brad, for letting, for letting me highlight a number of our students and our staff and the amazing things happening in our school district. Well, you're very welcome. I think that was one of the best uh, updates we've ever had, especially it was so interactive. I just How enjoyed about that. that. <laughs> yes. I loved it. That was great. Um, Thank all right. You. At this time, we're going to take a slight break to uh, congratulate our honorees, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Thank you.
Thank you. We are back uh, to continue our meeting. Um, I just want to let you know that tonight is our regular uh, meeting or a voting meeting. Um, so if you've tuned in to watch this meeting, you may notice that there's not a lot of discussion happening on the items. That's because we've seen and discussed these items multiple times prior to our meeting, mainly at our study session and our committee of the whole meeting. Um, if you wish to hear more regarding uh, some of these items, we ask that you uh, go back and watch the committee of the whole meetings. Uh, there you will find a much richer, richer discussion and many uh, questions, answers to your questions. Our committee of the whole meetings are recorded and they can be found on our website um, and via YouTube. So you'll be able to find those there. And um, if you are watching from home tonight and you needed a copy of the agenda, um, you can go on to www.livoniapublicschools.org, click on the school board tab and go down to board meeting information and there you'll find the meeting agenda uh, for tonight. Um, so we've already started our meeting. Uh, we had the uh, uh, Points of Pride Hayes Elementary green ribbon recognition. It was wonderful and we had a very highly interactive update district update from our superintendent. It was wonderful. So we uh, thank everybody that came and uh, brought their children this evening. We're going to move on uh, to item four, our consent agenda. Uh, may I? Oh, I do have to do some other things. Whoops. Number three, C, written communications. Do we have any written communications? Uh, seeing none. Okay, we're going to move on to 3D, a response to prior audience communications. Uh, do we have any? Seeing none. We'll go on to item E, audience communications. Is there anybody out in our audience that wishes to speak this evening? Uh, seeing none, we will go ahead and now we will move on to item four, our consent agenda. Uh, may I have a motion please? President Bradford. Uh, Mrs. Frank. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District approve the following consent agenda items as recommended by the superintendent. 5A, minutes of the regular meeting of September 23, 2024. 6A, approval of purchase of bulk salt. Support. We have a motion uh, by Mrs. Frank, supported by Mrs. Acosta for the consent agenda. Um, and this evening we'll hear from Mrs. Oh, oh no. no, we aren't going to hear from anybody. Is there anybody that wishes to um, take anything off of the agenda here? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and um, Mrs. Acosta, would you take the roll, please? Mrs. Frank? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield? Yes. Mrs. Burton? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Acosta says yes. President Bradford? Yes, and uh, that is motion, motion carried. carried. Thank you. What a night tonight for me. Okay, here we go. Item six of business matters. We're gonna go on to item B, the acceptance of financial statements for the 2023-2024 school year. May I have a motion, please? President Bradford. Mr. Johnson. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the 2023-2024 audit report is presented by the audit firm of Plant Moran. Support. We have a motion uh, by Mrs. Mr. Johnson, supported by Mrs. Burton, for the acceptance of financial statements for the 2023-2024 school year. And this evening, we're gonna hear from Mrs. Smith. Thank you, President <coughs> Bradford. And thank you to the entire board. Um, I always appreciate how much time you set aside for us to go over in such detail all the financials uh, of our district. So. This of course was spent uh, a lot of time on it during our study session this month and then again for the committee of the whole meeting. So tonight will be much more abbreviated, but for any community members that weren't um, with us for those last two meetings, of course, if they wanna visit our um, web page and go to the committee of the whole meeting from last uh, Monday, they'll get to hear lots more detail. So for tonight, I'll give you just a 20 second snapshot. Um, last year, we finished the year with a fund balance of $33.3 million or 18.2%. We have some additional information that we've learned of and incorporated uh, into our projections for this 24-25 school year. And we're looking to finish this school year in roughly the same spot, 33.5 uh, million or 18.8%. So for reference, the Michigan School Business Officials recommends 15 to 20%. So we're very excited to still be within that recommended range of 15 to 20%. So that's my very brief uh, update for you tonight. 
I'm happy to introduce you to uh, two of our auditors from Plant Moran. We have Tom Marchese and Tim Gehrig that have put together a PowerPoint presentation. The end will be a, a glimpse at what we've uh, been discussing over the last several weeks. Um, but with that, I'll introduce them or ask them to come up and we'll um, go through this presentation for you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having us here today. It's uh, always great to be on this side of the podium presenting the audit results in uh, mid to late October. So thank you for having us. So I'll start off by just providing an introduction. We have the slides here, but just wanted to provide you, along with the community, an idea of the extent of work we do with our audit. Uh, so it entails weeks, of we weeks and weeks of work that stretch from May all the way through today, where we're doing the final board presentation. Uh, we assess the district's internal controls, perform inquiries with management, uh, high-level analytics, tailor our audit approach, and identify any significant audit risk at the district. <coughs> so we use a risk-based approach where we spend time and effort on those items that could be potentially materially misstated and the bigger amounts at the district. Uh, in terms of testing, we perform analytical procedures and tests of transactions on these balances as they're reported. Uh, we'll confirm cash and investment balances. We'll review subsequent activity in order to ensure that the liabilities are stated completely based on what we're seeing after year end. And these are just a few of the examples of the tests that we perform. So once we obtain a sufficient level of evidence, we can provide our opinion, a level of assurance on the district's reported financial results. So the highest level of assurance that we can provide is an unmodified or clean opinion on the financial statements and federal awards audits. Uh, this is a high bar for districts to meet and we're pleased to uh, provide an unmodified opinion to the district for the 2024 financial statement along with the federal compliance audits. So for federal compliance, we did test IDEA this year. Uh, that's the special education cluster. Uh, new for this year were two new auditing standards that we'd be remiss if we didn't say thank you to uh, Ms. Smith and her team along with all the district personnel that helped us implement them. Um, these new auditing standards subjected the, our work to some increased rigors with significant estimates documentation along with internal controls. So uh, very big thanks to Ms. Smith and her staff along with all the district personnel for the grace and professionalism that they've shown us um, as we embarked on that implementation. So thank you. So this first slide is just the governmental funds balance sheet. It represents all the fund level <coughs> activities for the school district. The general fund will always be a major fund as the district's main operating fund. Uh, this year's other major funds included the Special Education Fund, along with the 2021 Bond Series 2 Fund. I'll focus the majority of my comments on the general fund. General fund assets were $84 million, liabilities were $51 million, and the difference between assets and liabilities leaves your fund equity of roughly $33 million. <coughs> That's a $1.8 million increase from fiscal year 23. Significant assets are comprised largely of cash and investments along with your state receivables for July and August stated. Significant liabilities include your summer pays along with unearned revenues for state categoricals um, along with amounts due to other governmental units. So you'll notice uh, under the 2021 Bond Series 2 fund, you'll see fund balance is restricted for, and this balance is restricted for capital expenditures and will decrease over time as bond proceeds are expended. Uh, the last item to point out within the general fund balance, um, there's an assigned classification for the fund balance of 1.4 million. This relates to uh, planned use of fund balance in fiscal year 25 as passed by the board. So the initial original board budget that was passed in June of 24 showed expenditures in excess of revenues. Uh, it's important to note that the district has fund balance available to incur this excess without disrupting uh, significantly the district spending plans for fiscal year 25. The 
next page is a statement of revenue expenditures and changes in fund balance. Uh, it's the budgetary comparison schedule that we've um, summarized here as well. So it just shows the final budget versus actual along with the variances between budget and actual at year end. So one point to note is that this general fund uh, activity does exclude activity of the funded projects, which typically operates at a break even. Um, as the activity in the funded projects is uh, for restricted grants that are subject to grant spending requirements. So where you have revenue recognized, you'll also have expenditures recognized to offset that revenue. Um, the next page will provide um, kind of a consolidated component to the combined general fund to illustrate that point. So within the <coughs> revenue and other sources, you'll see that the budget variance um, is about 0.3%, which um, is very precise in, on a $185 million budget. And then you'll see that the expenditures has a favorable 1% variance. So typically we find acceptable budgeting practices, sound budgeting practices to be anywhere from one to 3%. So the district's well within that window. And I guess the last item to point out here is you'll see that there's a favorable variance within the expenditures, that relates largely to some shifted general fund expenditures that were funded by a late approval of grant monies that was incurred by the funded projects um, later on in the year. So this next slide provides the <coughs> combined general fund. So the first column on the left is the activity we just looked at. Uh, you'll see in the middle the funded projects fund, which has $25 million of revenue along with $25 million of expenditures. And that provides the total combined general fund on the right. And with that, I'll turn it over to Tim just to go through a couple of the uh, <coughs> revenue and expenditure breakouts along with the pension and OPEB plans. Thanks, Tom. <coughs> uh, this slide shows the revenue of, for the general fund for the year ended June 30th, 2024. <coughs> the largest portion of funding comes from the state and makes up 72.9% of general fund revenues. This includes the state's portion of the foundation allowance as well as categorical funding. The next largest component is local revenue of 34 million. This is comprised primarily of property tax revenue. Other revenue of 10.5 million is represented largely by transfers from other funds and special education funding from Wayne Risa. Enhancement millage revenue was 5.4 million in the current year. This millage runs through 2028 and is up for renewal in November. This amount represents Livonia's allocation of those funds for the 2024 school year. This slide takes the district expenditures and shows them the object type or where they're being spent. Uh, as you expect in an organization where people are the biggest resource, the largest component of the expenditures are salaries and benefits. Salaries and benefits, including healthcare and retirement costs, comprise 87% of the total expenditures, and this is consistent with prior year's allocation. Retirement and benefit costs represent approximately 37% of total expenditures. The MIPSERS plan covering the pension and other post-employment benefits such as retiree health insurance provides an allocated share of the retirement system activity based on contributions to the plan. The pension plan shows a net liability of $32.4 billion versus $37.9 billion in the prior year. And the OPEB plan reported overfunding of $566 million versus a $2.1 billion liability in the prior year. The year-over-year -year change for all districts is due to the fluctuation of the value of the investments based on favorable market conditions. The estimate is determined by the Office of Retirement Services with the assistance of an actuary. Small swings in these input projections would create significant changes in the liability reported. The district presents a $350 million liability for the pension portion of the underfunded MIPSERS retirement plan under GASB 68 and a $6.2 million asset for the OPEB portion of the plan under GASB 75. 
This does not impact fund level statements. Nearly all districts in Michigan will show a deficit net position on their government wide statements because of their MIPSERS participation and allocated share of the MIPSERS liability. This slide illustrates the impact of GASB 68 and 75 on the school district. Note there is a deficit net position on the government wide statements, but no impact on the fund level statements. Without the MIPSERS balance of 334 million, net position would be a positive 168 million. The full accrual net deficit is 165 million when factoring the pension and OPEB activity. I'll now pass it back to Tom to finish off. So the final two slides, this first one just demonstrates uh, historical fund balance percentage. Ms. Smith had mentioned the uh, fund balance percentage as percentage of expenditures previously. You can see that it falls within the 15 to 20 percent window that we have presented here as recommended by MSBO. Uh, the state average is 21 percent as of fiscal year 23. That's the latest financial data that's available from the state at this point. Uh, the importance of fund balance is imperative just to withstand cuts and uh, prevent the school district from being in a reactionary mode. Uh, it reduces borrowing cost across uh, the district and the community and allows the district to forego some of these bridge financings that some other districts, some other schools could incur um, to bridge the gap between the summer months where uh, you're not receiving state aid payments. So uh, it's important to have this fund balance to keep more money in the classrooms and not pay interest expenses potentially. Um, it improves the bond ratings, which also reduces the costs on the communities as far as interest expense on borrowings through bonds. So with that, uh, we have one final slide and it just captures the different components of the COVID-19 funding that has uh, occurred from March 2020 through uh, September 30th, 2024, when the final wave of COVID funding expires through ESSER 3. So you'll see at the top right, the district received about $30 million of total funding, the total award amount, and they were you were able to spend um, substantially all of that, $29.7 million. And we have to say that uh, you maximized the federal awards from the pandemic and you were able to maintain compliance with those funds that are subject to federal rigors. Um, and so this is a good result, but it's also worth noting that this is $30 million that's been received over the past four years that's now expiring. It's not recurring, and uh, there's a lot of, the district has to have a deliberate plan in place for that spending in order to not ultimately have a burden through long-term cost uh, structures on the district. So thinking about funding that through with using that funding for legacy costs and so forth um, <coughs> could be a detriment in the long term for districts. So uh, it's an important key just to note that that is $30 million that has been received over the past four years that will not be uh, recurring in the future. With that, I just would like to say thank you again for the continued opportunity to serve. Uh, another great result for the district. That it's the best outcome you could hope for with the unmodified clean opinion. So we appreciate all the hard work and diligence and all the professionalism from Mrs. Smith and her team throughout the audit. Thank you. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions or comments? Uh, Mrs. Burton. Thank you. Um, I just would like to Thank you, uh, Allison, to you, the team in the finance department, and really all of our employees. Uh, when we kind of come in, come in and see a less than 1% variance, a 0.3% variance on a budget of $150 million, that is an enormous accomplishment. Um, and as, as you said, Tom, that's not something to be taken lightly. Um, it, it is, it's, it doesn't just happen. You guys are very, very careful with what's going on with, with these budgets. But not only are you you're careful about what is spent, but you project well what we need to spend and what we will become will be coming in with. Um, so thank you for that. That's um, in in an era right now when we've been hearing on the news 
recently of very significant school districts that are having multi-million dollar mm -hmm. budget problems. We don't have those here, and that's not just by chance, and it's not just by plugging in numbers. It's because a lot of thought and a lot of planning and a lot of great care goes into uh, the finance department of this district, but it is very noticed and it's very appreciated. Um, the, the COVID money is, is one thing too that, one example of that. We knew going in that it was a large sum of money, but that it was not going to continue. And when we hear of districts getting into financial trouble in the last year or two because the COVID money has stopped coming, I want to, I'll put it positively, mm -hmm. I am thrilled when I know that we're not gonna have that kind of a problem because we all knew this is one-time money. This is not recurring. We cannot hire a lot of people with, with those dollars, knowing that those dollars would not continue. Um, as Tom, as you mentioned, the, the legacy costs, and that's exactly what you're referring to if, for folks who may, who may be listening tonight and, and not have, have caught that or not really fully understood what it meant. We knew we needed to utilize those dollars in the best ways that we could without incurring ongoing costs for a school district. Uh, and we've done that, we've done that well as a school district. But again, to, to you, Mrs. Oquist, and uh, Mrs. Smith and our entire team for planning those dollars well. Uh, so thank you that we are not in a situation uh, that some of our neighbors are appearing to be surprised when we knew from the onset that these are short-term dollars. We're grateful for them. We did a lot of good with them, mm -hmm. but we made sure that we used them for purchases and things like this, equipment and, and curriculum and so forth, that, uh, that we, would, we could buy at a, for a one-time investment because those dollars would not continue coming. Um, and I just wanted to again touch on the, the fund balance and the necessity of it. Um, twice in my tenure as a board member, uh, we went through, uh, and it was 2008, when we had a $430 cut per student in October. And what that equated to was millions of dollars had to be cut out of our budget after the school year was already rolling, after teachers were already hired and, and in place in classrooms, so we couldn't do a lot with that. Uh, but those cuts are very real. We just had that threat uh, within the last year or two of a potentially, again, a mid-year announcement that you may not have $600 per student, which again is millions of dollars uh, once a budget was already set for the school year. Uh, that second one did not come to fruition, but the first one did. Uh, without a fund balance, we would have been in enormously dire straits. Um, as it's been equated, a fund balance is kind of like having a savings account for your home. Uh, and while the dollars might look large, it really only equates to, about, am I corrected that it's about 10 weeks of, of funding for our school district. Um, so we need to have that fund balance. We don't need to grow it you know, exponentially, and we don't. We stick within that 15 to 20% uh, recommended window. Um, during the financially tough period of 2008 and the few years following, it got down to a 2%, um, and that's dangerous. And we were not alone. The entire state, we, you know, the country was going through huge financial problems. Uh, but it's because we had a fund balance that we were able to weather a storm like that. Uh, and then it took many years to build it back up again. So I'm, I'm thrilled that we are at an 18% fund balance. That's exactly where it needs to be. Um, it allows us, uh, like you said, Tom, to, to not spend money on interest payments uh, mm -hmm. for, for cash flow uh, borrowing situations because we don't have those because we have enough in our bank to cover. Uh, and what, what you were alluding to was that we don't get state payments in uh, August and September, but we have to pay our employees year-round. So we have to have some money in our, in our reserves to make those, those payments. We can't simply not pay folks for a couple of months. That doesn't work like that. Um, but uh, I'm thrilled that we are, have kept our finances in such fabulous order and year over year it, it continues to happen. And it's, I just want you to know that it's, it's not assumed. Well, actually, it is, it is assumed, uh, but it's, it's not taken for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's because we know that a lot of work goes into planning and, uh, and then carrying out that plan with great diligence. So thank you very much. And thank you to our, our partners at Plant Moran for being here and for consistently doing such a great job, helping us not only with the audit, but I know as a great resource throughout the entire year. So thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Burton. That was well said, um, stated. Is there anybody else that has any comments? M uh, Mr. Johnson. Thank you, President Bradford. I just echo uh, 
Mrs. Burton's comments, I think they were well said. And I think one of the things that we need to keep in mind when you are so close on your percentages is that, and, and some people don't realize this, but we have to have our budget approved by the end of June. The state does not have that restriction. So when we get our budget at, at the end of June, a lot of it is estimates. But when you look at how close you come, mm -hmm. both on expenses and uh, revenue, when you really don't know, but you have, through your work, you're able to at least estimate so closely every year what our revenues are going to be, um, it, that's a real talent. And uh, it doesn't go unnoticed by the board. So thank you so much for everything that you and your team do. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Anybody else? All right. Thank you for joining us. Um, we have a motion uh, by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mrs. Burton, for the acceptance of the financial statements for the 2023-2024 school year. Mrs. Acosta, would you take the roll, please? Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Burton. Yes. Mrs. Frank. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield? Yes. Mrs. Acosta says yes. President Bradburn? Yes, and that motion carries. Thank you again for being here this Thank evening. You guys. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Moving on to item seven, instructional matters. Uh, we have item A, the approval of purchase of adult education laptops. May I have a motion, please? President Bradford. Mrs. Burton. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District approve the purchase of new HP ProBook Pro Book notebook laptop computers from CDW-G Vernon Hills, Illinois, for the amount of $57,473.40. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Burton, supported by Mr. Johnson, for the approval of purchase of adult education laptops. And this evening, we're going to hear from Mr. E2. Good, Good evening, evening, everyone. Mr. E2. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, this is a purchase of 60 laptops for our adult education program. This is for our ESL, high school completion, and adult basic education students. This is for daily classwork and for some mandatory testing. And as a follow-up to the Committee of the Whole meeting, uh, these laptops stay in-house for the most part. There might be some extenuating circumstances that lead to them checking them out, but by and large, they stay in-house. Perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, we have a motion by Mrs. Burton, supported by Mr. Johnson, for the approval of purchase of adult education laptops. Mrs. Acosta, would you take the roll, please? Mrs. Burton. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mrs. Frank. Yes. Mrs. Acosta says yes. President Bradford. Yes, and that motion carries. Moving on to item 7B, the approval of purchase of Chromebooks. May I have a motion, please? President Bradford. Mrs. Bonifield. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District authorize the purchase of new Chromebooks from People Driven Technology located in Byron Center, Michigan for a cost of $1,400,364 in deployment services from All Covered, a division of Conica Minolta located in New Hudson, Michigan for a cost of $45,000. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mrs. Frank, for the uh, approval of purchase of Chromebooks. And this evening, we're going to hear from Mr. Francis. Good evening, everybody. Uh, this is a purchase uh, twofold. And we have the replacement, 2,500 of these are replacing the Surface uh, Go Pros that we are, I shouldn't say Go Pros, just the Surface Pros. Uh, we'll be removing those, replacing them with Chromebooks, which is basically the, the standard that we have across the district for student use. Uh, and additionally, in this uh, purchase, we have some secondary buildings that are going to get some additional Chromebooks, as discussed in the Committee of the Whole, to fill out some of those carts. And then we have resource room classrooms for the uh, staff use across the district in all of our buildings. So that totals out to the, to the 3,600 that we discussed in our, in our uh, uh, Committee of the Whole. And we have uh, the planned dollars in the 2021 bond fund in our tech budget. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? Mrs. Bonifield. Mr. Francis, you mentioned um, swapping some, uh, I can't remember what they were, other 
to the to the Chromebooks um, because we like those better. But those that we're replacing are at end of life, correct? Correct, correct. And they they quite frankly never really um, they were they were not as easily used by students as the Chromebooks. The Chromebooks are just more streamlined. But but we did utilize yes, them to the them full extent. Years. We're not just pitching them because we don't like them. Correct. We've had them for several years. We've sort of been waiting to get to this point. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, we have a motion by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mrs. Frank, for the approval of purchase of Chromebooks. Uh, Mrs. Acosta, would you take the roll, please? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield? Yes. Mrs. Frank? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Burton? Yes. Mrs. Acosta says yes. President Bradford? Yes, and that motion carries. Moving on to item 7C, the approval of purchase of the PACE Lab. Um, may I have a motion, please? President Bradford? Mrs. Acosta? Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District approve the Act 18 discretionary funds purchase for the PACE Lab in the amount of $44,875 from Practical Assessment Exploration System, located in Thousand Oaks, California. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Acosta, supported by Mrs. Bonifield, for the approval of purchase of the PACE Lab. And this evening, we're gonna hear from Mrs. Sproul. Good evening. Good evening. So that was described perfectly. This PACE Lab is to be used by some of our special education students at Churchill High School. It promotes learning of job-related tasks um, in a classroom environment to help our students be successful in life after school. This is part of our Act 18 discretionary funds and comes out of that fund to support the use of this new program. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, we have a motion by Mrs. Acosta supported by Mrs. Bonifield for the approval of purchase of the PACE Lab. Mrs. Acosta, would you take the roll, please? Mrs. Acosta says yes. Mrs. Bonifield? Yes. Mrs. Burton? Yes. Mrs. Frank? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. President Bradford? Yes, and that motion carries. I just want to uh, make a comment that we did, just to reiterate, we have discussed this several times at the committee, the whole meeting, so that's why we are uh, going through these um, without many questions. So just to make sure people know that. Uh, item seven, we're gonna move on to item 7D the approval of purchase of literacy materials. May I have a motion, please? President Bradford. Mrs. Frank. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District approve the purchase of literacy materials, including decodable readers for kindergarten and second grade classrooms from Pioneer Valley Books, Northampton, Massachusetts, for $139,311, books for classroom libraries, and, student, and for students to take home for preschool through sixth grade classroom from Barnes and Noble, Amazon and Scholastic for $674,000 for a total purchase of $813,311. Support. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Frank, supported by Mrs. Burton, um, for the approval of purchase of literacy materials. And this evening we're gonna hear from Mrs. O'Brien. Good evening. Good evening, thank you. Um, we are excited to have this purchase be recommended from a grant that we applied for and received last year. Um, this grant was for $1.8 million for literacy supplies. And just to remind you some of the things that we spent on it last year, we purchased um, books for students to take home last year. So tonight's purchase would help prepare us to send our students home with books for this year. Um, Orton Gillingham and morphology training for our teachers along with the materials to support the use of that for our phonics instruction at our elementary schools. Our fifth grade student consumable books and then additional decodable books for our interventionists to use with students who um, are below grade levels. So the, the purchase for tonight's kindergarten and second grade classrooms is for grade level decodables that align with their grade level expected phonics instruction. Um, and then um, we already purchased first grade ones and so we wanted to add additional ones for kindergarten and second grade 
Uh, Pioneer Valley is a company that we currently use um, in our schools and it is a uh, strongly recommended company. And then our purchase for our classroom library, very exciting that we put into this grant and it was approved for money for classrooms to purchase new diverse tax updated student books for their classroom libraries. We know our teachers spend their own money to have some of the newest books that students love and so we are very happy that this grant can support them um, with picking out and purchasing new books for their classrooms. Thank you, Mrs. O'Brien. Any questions or comments? Mrs. Burton. Um, for the benefit of those who may be listening at home, <coughs> those of us in this room understood, but uh, no, but um, the books that are going home with the students, that is part of this grant. Um, and these are some books that students get to choose themselves to take home and, and to keep at home. And that is part of the design of the grant money is to help students build up their own home libraries and to increase their love of reading. Uh, but part of the, the joy of it is they get to take these books home, but that they get to do some of the choosing of those books themselves. You couldn't um, have said it better. That's exactly how we wrote the grant, so students could pick their own books. And if you remember, the grant got released late in the spring, so we were scrambling quite a bit mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. order to get those books in students' hands before they left for the summer. So this year we want to be better prepared so that they can choose their books and, and build their own classroom or home library mm -hmm. with books that they love. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Burton. All right, we have a, a motion by Mrs. Frank, supported by Mrs. Burton for the approval of purchase of literacy materials. Uh, Mrs. Acosta, would you take the roll, please? Gladly. Mrs. Frank. Yes. Mrs. Burton. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Acosta says yes. President Bradford. Yes, and that motion carries. Moving on to item eight, personnel matters. And item A, teachers for approval. May I have a motion, please? President Bradford. Mr. Johnson. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the recommendation of the superintendent and offer employment for the 2024-2025 school year to the teachers listed on the attached document. Support. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mrs. Acosta, for the um, teachers for approval. And this evening, we're gonna hear from Mr. Abate. Yes, thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. So the new staff members we are presenting to the board this evening fill a few needs that we had in special education and shared time. They are all very well qualified to fill these respective positions, and we're confident they will perform at a high level and represent LPS in a manner that is consistent with our shared vision and collective commitments. These positions have also been included in the 2024-2025 budget. We are pleased to be recommending these talented professionals to join our LPS family, and with your approval, we are excited to have them working with our students. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, we have a motion by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mrs. Acosta, for teachers for approval. Mrs. Acosta, would you take the roll, please? Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Acosta says yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mrs. Frank. Yes. Mrs. Burton. Yes. President Bradford. Yes, and that motion carries. Moving on to item 8B, teachers for tenure. Um, may I have a motion, please? President Bradford. Mrs. Burton. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the recommendation of the superintendent and acknowledge that tenure status has been granted to the following teachers effective on the respective date. Corinne Bella Alt, October 9, 2024. Ryan DiMaggio, September 30, 2024. Emily Gage, October 10, 2024. Amy Hoffman, October 21st, 2024. Natalie Nelson, October 14th, 2024. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Burton, supported by Mrs. Frank, for uh, teachers for tenure. And this evening, we're going to hear from Mrs. Keats. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Our teachers for tenure on this agenda tonight have successfully completed the district's requirements for probationary teachers, including years of service, evaluations of overall performance, and documentation of student growth. 
We have carefully reviewed all supporting materials along with the recommendations of our school administration and have verified they should be granted tenure status with Livonia Public Schools. We wish to offer our congratulations to them for reaching this milestone and look forward to their continued success with LPS. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Congratulations. Congratulations. Seeing, uh, well, I guess we can go on. Uh, we have a motion by Mrs. Burton, supported by Mrs. Frank, for teachers for tenure. Mrs. Acosta, would you take the roll, please? Mrs. Burton? Yes. Mrs. Frank? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Acosta says yes. President Bradford? Yes, that motion carries. Moving on to item 8C, uh, resignations. That's for board information only. Moving on to item 8D, retirements. May I have a motion, please? President Bradford. Mrs. Bonifield. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public School School District adopt the attached resolutions of appreciation for the services rendered by Linda Devlin, Cindy Monk, Diane Smith, Carl Wortman. Support. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mr. Johnson for the um, for retirements and this evening we're going to hear from Mrs. Keats. Hello again. Hello. Tonight we honor and congratulate four members of our LPS family who are retiring from their positions with Livonia Public Schools. As they leave the district they take with them a combined total of 113 years of experience. On behalf of the administration I would like to thank our retirees for their dedicated years of service to the students of LPS and we ask the board to please adopt the attached resolution of appreciation. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Congratulations Congratulations. and happy retirement. Thank Thank you for your years of service. And you're going to be missed, all of that. All right, Uh, we have a motion by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mr. Johnson for retirements. Mrs. Acosta, would you take the roll, please? Yes, Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. Mrs. Burton. Yes. Mrs. Frank? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Acosta says yes. President Bradford? Yes, and that motion carries. Uh, Moving on to uh, nine, hearing from board members. Item 9A, first reading of board policy IKF, school stores. And this evening we're going to hear from Mr. E2. Thank you again, President Bradford. Yes, this is IKF board policy, instructional (laughs) program school stores. And it is being uh, reviewed and revisited and for first read. It was originated in June of 1988. If you'd like me to do so, I can do a first read out loud for us. Sure. The superintendent or designee shall be authorized to establish school stores for the purpose of the sale of school supplies, school and or district spirit wear and merchandise, and food and beverage. Items for sale by the school store must be in compliance with district policy and state and federal law and approved by the Director of Secondary Programs and District Services or designee. Accounting procedures for the school stores will align with best best practices as outlined by the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, GASB, and it's approved by the Chief Financial Officer. Sales reports will be provided monthly to the Chief Financial Officer or designee. And we do have a legal reference at the bottom there for the Healthy Hunger-Free Kids Act of 2010. Thank you. Any questions or comments uh, regarding this? So this is a first read, so um, this will uh, have a second read at the next regular uh, board meeting. Okay. All right, moving on to item 9B, first reading board policy IF, instructional resources. And again, we're gonna hear from, oh, Mrs. O'Brien. Thank you, President Bradford. Yes, IF, instructional programs, instructional resources is um, a policy that we talked about at the study session in the Committee of the Whole. It is from December 15th, 2014, and I will read it. We added just one sentence at the end, but I'll read the whole policy since it's short. The Livonia Public Schools School District shall provide materials, equipment, and other physical resources, a technology network and related resources, consultative assistance, and auxiliary supportive personnel to teachers and administrators within budget limitations where appropriate. The board recognizes that the United States Code makes it illegal for anyone to duplicate copyrighted materials without permission. 
And like Mr. E2's board policy, we added the legal reference at the bottom and cross-reference between two other board policies. Very good. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, okay, that's again, first reading of the board policy, so that will go on for the regular meeting um, for the month of November. All right, moving on to 9C, the second reading of board policy IDDE, post-secondary credit opportunities. May I have a motion, please? President Bradford. Mrs. Acosta. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the recommendation of the policy committee and adopt board policy language per the attached document for board policy IDDE post-secondary credit opportunities. Support. We have a motion by um, Mrs. Acosta, supported by Mrs. Frank for the second reading of board policy IDDE post-secondary credit opportunities. And Mr. E2. I'm just excited we're at the second reading. <laughs> Finally, right? <laughs> Would you like me to read it again, or are we okay at this point? Uh, I think we are okay. Let me just look at it to make sure. Yes. Um, since we, yeah, let's let's go ahead and have a quick read. It's Absolutely. a short one. Of Thanks. Course. Board policy IDDE for instructional program post secondary credit opportunities. The Board of Education supports and shall provide opportunities for students to receive post-secondary credit while attending high school. The school district is required to pay the lesser of A, the actual charge for tuition, mandatory course fees, material fees, and registration fees, or B, the state portion of the student's foundation allowance adjusted to the proportion pro pro of the school year they attend the post-secondary institution. Students enrolled in a dual enrollment course but do not earn credit must repay the district. Excellent. Thank you for reading that. Of course. Um, any questions or comments? Uh, Mrs. Frank. <laughs> oh, she's kidding. We did work on this one extensively, so. It came together nicely. It's glad that it made, uh, we're happy it made it to the second yeah. reading. Of course. All right. Okay, we have a motion by Mrs. Acosta, supported by Mrs. Frank, for the second reading board policy IDDE, post-secondary credit opportunities. Mrs. Acosta, would you take the roll, please? Yes. Mrs. Acosta says yes. Mrs. Frank? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Burton? Yes. President Bradford? Yes, and that motion carries. Moving on to item 9D, the second reading board policy JGCD, medications. May I have a motion, please? President Bradford? Mrs. Frank? Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the recommendation of the policy committee and adopt board policy language per the attached doc document for board policy JGCD medications. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Frank, supported by Mrs. Acosta, for the second reading board policy JGCD medications. And this evening we're going to hear from Mr. Abate. Yes, hello again. Hello. Would you like a full reading or would you like just uh, <laughs> another summary? Uh, I think a, a summary would be uh, yes. necessary in this case since it's a long, lengthy one. Sure, no problem. So um, initially, in the initial paragraph, we have uh, expanded and uh, explained in detail our definition of medication, which includes prescription, non-prescription, over-the-counter, herbal medications and substances, anything administered by mouth, uh, inhaler, injection, drop sprays, etc. cetera. Uh, we have also clarified and expanded the section that describes the, uh, the use of, uh, of EpiPens and the, um, the maintenance of our emergency supply of EpiPens in each school um, and the various responsibilities of folks uh, to, to manage those. Uh, we've also, also um, expanded and clarified the individuals qualified to administer uh, EpiPen injections um, and the students to whom they may be administered. Uh, and did some cleanup and on the reporting of injections section as well. All right, thank you. Any questions or comments? Uh, Mrs. Burton. Uh, just for the, for the benefit of those who may not have been able to hear some of our prior meetings on, on this topic, um, the, the district does have two EpiPins in each school, but those are to be used for emergency purposes only. They're not intended to be used uh, if by, for a student who requires them on a regular basis, that is still the responsibility of that student's family. 
Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, we have a motion by Mrs. Frank, supported by Mrs. Acosta for the second reading of board policy JGCB medications. Mrs. Acosta, would you take the roll, please? Mrs. Frank. Yes. Mrs. Acosta says yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Burton. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield. Yes. President Bradford. Yes, and that motion carries. Moving on to item 9E, hearing from board members. Uh, hearing from board members is just a time set aside if any board member wishes to address uh, any anything. Is there anybody that would like to speak tonight? Mrs. Bonifield. Um, a couple things I want to say. Um, I was so pleased to see the uh, girls' unified hockey team getting their shout out uh, during the uh, update. The update. The um, Mrs. Martinez, the coach, and the young ladies were a spectacular help. Um, we had a great event. Um, I got a little nervous <laughs> coming up to the event, but we pulled it off, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a, a fantastic event. And, and again, a shout out to all of our students um, for their ability to come. It was a Saturday morning, and then they had a, a, another hockey, uh, another tournament no they actually had another uh, uh no, no uh, they went and helped the kids some of the kids at ford fields at, at ford oh. uh, arena skate there was an, some kind of an oh. open skate oh. to introduce uh -huh. the girls so they left our event and went right over there and so they had a full day of uh helping okay. out um and donating their time on a saturday um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was, in all seriousness, about the whole thing with us not necessarily having a ton of discussion during this meeting. And I know we laugh about it, but at, part of it is is that this the central office staff doesn't bring us anything that's half baked most of the time. <laughs> it's covered way, way better than it probably needs to be. And they bring us all kinds of information and they know and understand what we're looking for um, and cover all the bases up front. And then uh, like the one uh, policy that we were <laughs> laughing about, sometimes we beat things up. Um, and uh, always uh, graciously is brought back time and time again, if that's what it takes until until we get there. So when we make it to these meetings, um, we've had a lot of time to, mm -hmm. to sort things out and uh, our, our packets come stuffed with information. Um, and so we do an amazing and thorough job on making sure that all of this stuff goes smoothly and um, a lot of stuff gets done behind the scenes, not necessarily a lot of uh, always not a lot of activity at the board table. So um, it's been, it's a great, um, uh, we have a, a great working relationship with everybody. We know what each other needs. And uh, so yeah. it's, uh, it it's works good. out really well. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mrs. Bonfield. Anybody else? Oh, Mrs. Frank, is this a I, real one now? This is for real. This okay. Time. But I do wanna, <coughs> Uh, reiterate what she said about that and I do appreciate the the cabinet's time and all of my colleagues time we don't ask the same questions that we asked at the com committee of the whole we've asked it once we don't just repeat all those questions at this meeting and so I'm grateful for that but I'm also grateful for Mrs. Oquist who who has directed her staff to post everything online you could go back and watch anything so everything is available we go above and beyond what's required by law in terms of posting I think we're only a, um, required by law to post the agendas but you can go back and look at a, 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 um, a watch a actual committee of the whole meeting. You can watch it and you can see exactly the depth of discussion that happens at that time. But I, I just appreciate that we don't uh, just repeat something that we've already done in, the, in these meetings. So thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Mm -hmm. um, Mrs. Elquist. Thank you so much. If all of the board members have commented, I just want to say we, since we do not have another uh, meeting on camera prior to election day, I just want to note um, that we did send home information in the most recent LPS link about the Wayne County Enhancement Millage. Mm -hmm. um, that is on the ballot, and I know many um, families have those ballots at home now um, or will be voting in person on the 5th. 
So if you need any additional information um, beyond what we provided for you, and we will continue to provide between now and Election Day, I encourage you to reach out to me directly, and I would be happy to talk with you about any questions you may have regarding the Wayne County Enhancement Millage um, and any information related to that renewal. Again, it is a renewal that was first uh, from a um, request that was first put in place in 2016, was renewed once in 2020, and this would be a second renewal. Uh, also, a reminder that on that day, we do have our Board of Education election as well. So um, just a reminder that on November 5th, it is election day, um, and we will, uh, most of the voting does take place in our schools. Um, that is a professional development day for our staff, and I'd like to thank our leaders um, and our um, cabinet members who have made arrangements to have uh, many of our professional development activities at non-voting sites. Um, mm -hmm. It's quite a bit of work to, to make those arrangements to be able to host voting in our schools, so I appreciate everyone's efforts to um, have that prepared and ready to go on Tuesday, November 5th. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Oquist. Any other comments from board members? Oh, Mr. Johnson. Thank you, President Bradford. And on behalf of myself and my colleagues on the board, I just want to thank the cabinet, our administration, our staff, and every employee for everything they do day in and day out to make this district the best it is. So just a heartfelt thank you. Thank you. I, I think we all agree on that point for sure. We're, we're really blessed in this district with great staff, great families, great students, and a great community. So uh, on that note, uh, if there is there any other business before the board? Seeing none, we have uh, item 10, the adjournment. We're adjourned for this evening. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.